In this video, let's have a look at the cosine rule, where we can use it, and do a couple of examples for each scenario. So we use the cosine rule in a triangle to find an unknown side length when two sides of the triangle and an included angle are given, so if you need to find that third side, or you can use it to find an unknown angle when you are given three of the sides. So they're the two times you use it. Let's have a look at each of them. So here's the scenario when we've been given two sides and an included angle. And remember that included angle is the one between the two sides that make that angle, if you like. And so we're using it to find that third side, which will be opposite the included angle here. So when you come to label your triangle, the sides there are C and B, and noticing where they fall in this formula, that the subject of the formula, the A squared to start with, is that third side that you're trying to find. B and C here are sides, same there, B and C are sides. Now that dot there, if you're not familiar with that, uh, that we use in place sometimes as a multiply, just sometimes because that little letter C and the capital letter C sometimes get a bit confusing for people. So let's do an example. Now here's one, it's not to scale. What have we got? We have two sides and an angle, and it is included because it's between those two sides. And the note here is that side A must be opposite angle A. So the side that we're trying to find needs to be opposite the angle that, where we've been given the information. So here's our formula. So I suggest that we substitute the numbers in. It could be handy to label everything else in the triangle. So we've got angle A and side B and C. It doesn't matter which one is B and C in that formula. You can do it the other way around. Feel free to do that and then check to see if you get the same answer as me. Let's substitute in. A we don't know, but we leave that as A squared. B, 9.6 and squaring it. C is 8 and we're squaring it. Then we subtract 2. This time around I'm going to put them in brackets and you can use brackets when you put it in your calculator as well. Um, so B is 9.6, C is 8 and then another multiply by cos um, of A and that is 40. Making sure your calculator is in degrees, working that out and we get 38.4. 496. A bit of a guide there is um, if you need to finish in two decimal places, then we suggest work in three, so then you can round right at the very end. If you're rounding too often, you're losing some level of accuracy. Now we're not finished yet though, because we're solving for a, not a squared, so we have to do the inverse of, of a square, which is a square root. The square root of 38.469 comes out to be 6.2 zero and the units of that is centimeters but you would notice on your calculator um, I do encourage you to be using your calculator while you're no taking these notes down so that you're practicing using all the different functions is that's rounded and the, the way we represent that is either by an equals with a dot at the top and the bottom or a squiggly equals for approximately equal to. Doing another one here again not to scale now in this triangle it's been labeled M and what we've got written here is because the unknown side is already labeled M, we don't have to use A in our formula. So don't feel like you have to stick to that. Side M, little letter M, let's call the angle across from it capital M. Let's label the other two sides, B and C, doesn't matter which way around you label them. And now we substitute them into the formula. We've got that written there for us. So M squared is equal to the sides squared, adding them together. So B, I've said 5.4 squared plus 7.7 .7 squared, subtract 2. I'll use a multiply this time as opposed to the brackets. Multiply by B, which was 5.4, multiplied by C, 7.7, .7, multiplied by cos of the angle, which is 65. Typing that all in, please do type it in just so you're double checking that your calculator is doing the same as me. And we get 53. 0.305, that's rounded to three decimal places. We need to undo the square by doing a square root. And then our final answer again is rounded, so approximately equal to 7.30, and the units for that is kilometers. So that was two examples when we needed to try and find a side. The other scenario is when we are given three sides and we need to find the angle. And so the formula for that is actually just a rearrangement of the formula that we've been doing, but we've done it for you to save you having to work out how to do that. 
And the thing to note is that the side opposite the unknown angle must be in the subtract position in the formula. I'll just talk you through that again. Notice that over here we're solving for cos of A. A is the angle. When you label your triangle, you will have side A, so that's little letter A. And where is that in this formula down here? It's on the top line on the far right. That's the one in the subtract position. So we've just got to be careful of that. Let's put that into practice. We've got the formula written top right here, and here's the triangle we're dealing with. We, we are given three sides of this triangle, and we're solving for uh, angle A. So labeling the triangle A, B, and C. This side over here on the far left has to be A, and the others can be B and C. Doesn't matter around which uh, order these ones are. Let's substitute these into the formula. So we're finding cos of angle A, and that's equal to B squared, so 9.6 squared, adding 8 squared for side C, and then a subtract for the third side, which is A, the 6.2, and that gets squared as well, all over 2 times by B, 9.6, times by C, which is 8. Again, in your calculator, I would suggest using the fraction button that looks like this so that you can have the numerator and the denominator clear. That works out to be 0 0.766 approximately. But to solve for A, we need to do the inverse operation of that cos. And so that's that cos to the negative 1. And that comes out to be about 40 degrees that rounds to, depending on how many decimal places you've been using prior to that. So that was solving for the angle. We'll just do one more of those just to show that it doesn't have to be letter A that you use. So in this particular one, we've been given an R, a capital letter R. So let's label our sides. The side across from that opposite it is R, but still feel free to use B and C for the others. Now let's substitute those in. Here's our formula. It's really handy to write the formula out every time. Then you don't have to think so much. You just have to substitute the numbers in. Instead of cos of A this time, it's cos of R. And side B is 85, squaring that. Add on 100, squaring that. Subtract side A or side R in this case, 28.4 squared, all over 2 times by B times by C. Working that out, the right hand side of the equals there comes out to be 0 0.966 approximately. Solving for R, we have to do an inverse cosine function. And working that out, that rounds to about 14.98. And what units is that? Well, we were finding an angle, so it's in degrees. There we go. That's using the cosine rule to finding sides and finding angles. There's some problems to do. Thanks for joining me.